test pilot Jason Clements goes through final flight checks in the cockpit of an F-16. Just make sure my switches are set in the right position. The throttle is free and clear. Lights are on. X-ray thing on radio check. There's a strong sense of excitement for this flight. Shortly before takeoff, with the engines whining and a cockpit cooling system blowing at its max, Clements exits the cockpit. He then closes the canopy via a remote switch. Powered up and ready for flight, the F-16 begins to roll down the runway without a pilot in the cockpit. In a matter of seconds, the aircraft with its burner lid roars into the southern sky headed out over the Gulf of Mexico. It's the first time ever an F-16 has flown without a pilot in the cockpit. Meet Boeing's newest full-scale aerial target, the QF-16, a modified F-16 that will allow pilots the chance to train against and fire upon the most realistic enemy aircraft threats ever created. It was a little different to see it without anybody in it, uh, but it was, a, it was a great flight all the way around. A replication of uh, current real-world uh, situations in aircraft platforms that they can shoot as a target. Now we have a 9G capable, uh, highly sustainable uh, aerial target. While there's no pilot physically sitting in the cockpit, two U.S. Air Force test pilots are flying the plane remotely from a ground control station at Tyndall Air Force Base. Today, uh, no pilot in the cockpit. Uh, it gets you a little more on your toes, uh, on edge. But the flight itself went very well and went as advertised. The jet performed well and did what it was supposed to do. While in the air, the unmanned QF-16 reaches an altitude of 40,000 feet, a speed of Mach 1.47, and engages in aerial maneuvers such as a barrel roll while pulling more than 7 Gs. F-16 and F-4 chase planes off the port side follow the QF-16 as it makes its final approach back to Tyndall and picture-perfect landing. Got the jet in the air, flew great, everything worked great, made a beautiful landing, probably one of the best landings I've ever seen, um, and uh, stopped right on the center line. So, no, it was a, a great mission. So far, Boeing has modified six QF-16s, all of which had been stored at davis Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona. In fact, the plane used in the first unmanned flight had been out of service for 15 years. Modifying the F-16s to fly remotely was a challenge for the team. Fantastic integration work done by the team uh, early on and that we still are pretty amazed at, really, that, um, that the team was able to think about everything that they thought of to make this thing work. For former F-16 pilots like Jason Clements, Helping create a full-scale, unmanned aerial target has led to mixed emotions. I love the F-16 and, and brag about it a lot, and now to, to get something ready to take off on its own so somebody else can shoot it down makes it, to, uh, makes it a little bittersweet uh, in my eyes. This is why I became an engineer. This program is, the, to me, the epitome of my career. This is what it was all about. I mean, to be able to take this airplane, figure it out, make it work, and it's just been a blast. It's cool.